Hello class, this is the second part of Chapter 7, Lecture for Business 7. So in the first part, we learned about five new accounts for a merchandising business. And we also did two journal transactions, new journal entries. One was the sale on account or for cash. So that's the journal transaction, debit AR or cash and credit sale which is your new revenue account and STP stands for sales tax payable. That's a liability account. We also talked about uh, a customer making a return or requesting an allowance. So pretty much your first transaction is flipped. Your sale credit becomes a debit to the contra account called sales returns and allowances, SRA. Your increase to the sales tax payable becomes a decrease because we have to give sales tax back to the customer. So debit decrease. And cash goes down or accounts receivable. If originally the sale was on account, accounts receivable is going down credit. That's why we call it the credit memo. So now we're going to talk about sales with credit cards. There are two types of credit cards, bank and non-bank. So like Visa and Master are issued by specific banks and, you know, something like American Express or Discovery are non-bank credit cards. So let me go back to the slides. So this is slide number where we stopped, slide number 17, accounting for credit cards. So, <clears throat> sales made to customers using bank credit cards are treated as cash sales. Even though the customer uses a credit card, the bank guarantees us that we will receive cash usually immediately on the same day. If the customer fails to pay her credit card bill, we are going to collect cash no matter what. So the risk lies with the bank that issues the credit card. Uh, so the bank is taking the risk upon themselves. Therefore, they're going to charge us uh, usually between 1% and 3% for taking that risk. That's why a lot of retailers prefer cash over credit cards. And sometimes at some gas stations, uh, the cash price is quite cheaper than the credit card price because then the gas station does not have to pay this credit card expense. So here how it looks like. So let's say that we sell merchandise that totals $900 to customers that use bank credit cards. It's 8% sales tax and the bank charges us 3% credit card fee. This is credit card fee. So my sale is $900, this is my sale, plus the sales tax, 8% on $900, this is sales tax payable, so this will be my two credits, two credits. And then the customer owes us $972, but the bank will hold 3% of it. So this will be the credit card expense. So this $29.16 is a debit to the credit card expense account. And this will be my cash. So next screen shows you the transaction. Debit cash, debit credit card expense, credit sales, credit sales tax payable. Again, if this is too fast, stop, rewind, look at the transaction. Now, if the customer uses non-bank credit card, then we treat it as accounts receivable, not as cash. We have to wait until we collect money from American Express. So here is an example. We sell merchandise for $1,000 plus 8% sales tax. On top of that, American Express charges us 4% credit card fee or credit card expense. So we will have to make two journal entries here, okay? 
the first journal entry will be to record AR for the amount of money American Express owes us. And the second happens at a later date when we receive the cash payment less 4%, less this amount. This is the credit card expense. So here are your two journal transactions. The customer uses credit card to buy $1,000 of merchandise plus sales tax. So we are supposed to get paid $1,080. Not by the customer, by American Express. And then at a later date, we receive, instead of 1080, instead of 1080, we receive $1,036.80 because American Express charges 4%. This is 4%. The percentage will be given to you, which they take from us for the convenience of using um, the credit card. So that becomes the credit card expense. Okay. So I want to go back to my Word document that I emailed to you. And these are the transactions we just talked about. A sale with a bank credit card, treated as cash, one transaction. And a sale with a non-bank credit card, which is treated as accounts receivables. And we have to record one transaction with receivables. And then later we have to collect cash less the credit card expense. Okay, I'm going back to the slides. So guys, the next topic here is trade discounts. So we're going to focus on a uh, cash discount. So we want to encourage customers to pay us earlier. For example, in this example, uh, we made um, we made a sale under these credit terms. Okay, let me show you credit terms. You have not seen them before. So, the sale could say net 30. That would mean that the customer has to pay us within 30 days. But sometimes I want to encourage customer to pay earlier than 30 days. Time is money. So I might give them a discount. This is up to me. So under these credit terms, I tell the customer, you have the credit terms 1 slash 10 net 30. If you pay within first 10 days, I will give you 1% discount on whatever amount you owe me. If you don't pay within the first 10 days, your net payment, full payment, without discount is due by the 30th day. And guys, you know, if the sale happened on January 20th, then we just add 10 days. So then the customer, if they pay up to January 30th, 20 plus 10, 30th, they get a discount, 1% discount. If they pay on January 31st or later, they will not get a discount. I have to point out that this discount is not given on returns or allowances. So if the customer makes a return or gets an allowance in between the sale date and the payment date, I have to subtract any kind of sales returns and allowances. And I'm not going to give them 1% discount on what they returned. So here's an example. The customer bought $2,000 worth of merchandise from me. I'm ignoring sales tax. And so the customer pays within 10 days, within 9 days. So we give them 1% on $2,000. So what's 1% on $2,000? Cross out the last two zeros. It's $20. Where does this $20 go? Into the new account, Contra Revenue, sales discount goes up, which will decrease my sales on the income statement. So sales discount goes up. Cash received is the difference. Plug in. They owed me $2,000 minus discount. So they send me a check for $1980. Plug in. And accounts receivable is received, paid, credit. So let me again show you the um, 
this transaction on the Word document where I have put my typical transactions. So I receive cash within a discount period. Here we are. Debit cash, debit sales discount, credit AR. By the way, your textbook uh, doesn't talk about it, but if the customer pays on the 31st of January, if they pay after a discount period, then I don't give them any discount. They owe me $2,000, so I debit cash $2,000 and I credit accounts receivable $2,000. So these are your six new journal entries for the entire chapter. So most of your homework will be around these entries. So let me go back to the slides and very quickly point out that you also have to prepare the top of the income statement. I went over it in the first part of the video. So you've got your sales minus two contract accounts. So these two are negative. $7,000. So that's net sales. What is net sales? It's your sales minus two contra revenue accounts. Your textbook also talks about a subsidiary ledger. We have not used those before. So in addition to a regular ledger, so in addition to general ledger that we studied in chapter four, we use additional or subsidiary ledgers, subsidiary. So one of them is an accounts receivable ledger. It's not enough for me just to know my total AR, right, in the general ledger. I want to know how much each customer owes, how much money each customer owes me. So in, I have to make more detailed description of the account, accounts receivable, in the subsidiary ledger, which is called accounts receivable ledger. So I'll have a separate account for every credit customer. So then the total of my subsidiary ledgers must be equal to the amount in the accounts receivable account. So accounts receivable is called the control account. It just shows one total and then it's subdivided per customer and the total of all customers, the total has to be equal to the balance of the AR in the general ledger. So that's what pretty much this part of the chapter talks about. This is what I mentioned. The total of individual customer balances must be equal to the, I'm oh, sorry, to the uh, balance of the accounts receivable account in the ledger. So this is <clears throat> individual account. This is the accounts receivable ledger, subsidiary ledger. So Roy Anderson owes me 702. Then I go through each customer. So these are my four customers. Then this total this is called the schedule of AR. You just list customers, oops, list their balances. So this total right here, this total, 756. Then I check against, uh, against account receivable in the general ledger. It also has to be 756. So my control account, which is your accounts receivable in the general ledger, also has to be equal to 756. This is pretty much this chapter. So after you viewed this lecture, you are ready to do the rest of the work. You have a discussion board in class activity to complete Learn Smart homework and the quiz. Email me with any questions. Happy studies. Bye.